So listen, I've got a seriously conflicted love-hate relationship with former Ohio State quarterback Craig Krenzel. I'm gonna explain why and show some of the photos on today's From the Vault. Hey there, thanks so much for watching. I'm David Bergman. If it's your first time here, I've been a professional photographer for 30 years now. And what I'm doing on this show is pulling an interesting image out of my archive each week and telling the behind the scenes story. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button if you enjoy the video. All of those things help me uh, on the YouTubes. It keeps uh, the algorithm guessing and it uh, keeps people coming back to this show, which I certainly appreciate. I'm also offering signed fine art prints of most of the images that I talk about on this show. You can check all those out each week at davidbergmanphoto.com. So I'm gonna take you back to the 2002 football season. I had just moved to New York City a year before that and I was freelancing for Sports Illustrated. Now, the way the magazine works at that time is every Monday afternoon, they would have their meetings. Uh, the photo editors would have their meeting and decide what games they were gonna shoot and what assignments they were gonna cover. And they would make those calls to the photographers. Now, um, for me, uh, I was really happy every week when I got that call on Monday. Uh, more than often, uh, the case was during football season, I would get a college game on Saturday and then a pro game on Sunday, usually in different cities. There's lots of travel. I live in New York City, but that didn't really matter. They kind of would keep me usually in the eastern half of the country and they have other photographers in the western half. So they would assign all their photographers to different games. And um, it really was quite a well-oiled machine. Um, I was the new guy at the time. I, like I said, I'd only been there about a year uh, and I was just thrilled to be working for the magazine. So it's October 19th, 2002, and they assigned me to cover the Ohio State at Wisconsin game. Now at that time, Ohio State was uh, undefeated. They were seven and zero, ranked fourth in the nation. Wisconsin was five and two. Um, and I covered the game. Uh, I didn't. I don't think anything actually ran from that game, um, but that's just how they worked. They would assign uh, lots of photographers to cover a lot of games, and it, you know, money budgets weren't as much of an issue back then. They were, of course, but uh, you know, the magazine was making plenty of money, I assume, and so they would send multiple photographers out to multiple games. And sometimes a story wouldn't pan out. Or sometimes uh, you were just there in case of an upset. I think that was probably the case with this game. Um, I, I may have even been there by myself. I don't remember if another Sports Illustrated photographer was there with me, but I was really there more than likely just in case Ohio State lost. Um, at that time, we were starting the transition to digital. If you've watched this show before, you know that I was involved in that transition with the magazine, but I was still shooting some slide film, some digital. It was kind of a case-to-case -case basis. During the day, the magazine still liked us to shoot slide film because it was really high quality. So even if they didn't run anything from that particular game, they would have high quality stock images to use later. That's a little bit of foreshadowing, by the way, for something to come. Um, from that game, I did get some nice images, uh, specifically, sp especially on Ohio State, including, yes, quarterback Craig Krenzel. Uh, it was really great to shoot there. It was a nice, cool day. It was probably in the 40s or so. And we had that beautiful red background because the Wisconsin fans were all wearing red. So with the sort of muted, um, uh, cloudy day and that nice uh, background, it really made for some good images. So that was it. I did the game just like I did every game and uh, moved on the next day. I was covering a pro game. I uh, was actually doing the Jaguars at the Ravens, so I had to fly to Baltimore and do that. Now, unrelated to that game, uh, a couple weeks later, I actually got a call from the NFL photo editor at the magazine, George Washington. Yes, his name's George Washington. He's not related to uh, our first president. Um, and he called me Monday, that Monday afternoon, to actually congratulate me on my first SI cover. I had never had a cover of the magazine. And in that early November issue, the cover was going to be, because the magazine was you know, being put together on Monday and it comes out on Tuesday night or actually Wednesday to subscribers. Um, that issue, the cover was going to be Detroit Lions quarterback Joey Harrington. And I had covered a, a game or two, I guess, that year of the Lions. And um, they said, I got the cover. I was so excited. I called my mother. I told a couple of friends, you know. Um, and then a couple hours later, I called into the magazine about something digital related to talk to um, Phil Jackie, who 
at the time. I don't remember what his title was, Phil. I don't know, you know, what exactly your your uh, it said on your business cards, but he was kind of the photo IT guy, I guess, for for uh, lack of a better way to say that. Um, and I was working closely with him during that time to work on that transition to digital. And if you know Phil, Phil, uh, you know, uh, he's a funny guy. He's, he can be very sarcastic. And he made this comment to me. He said, oh, I heard you almost had your first cover this week. And I was like, okay, that's not funny, dude. Like, I, I think the editors were kind of happy for me because I was the new guy. And, you know, it was really nice of George to call me. And he seemed excited that I had the cover. And, and then Phil just made this comment, like, without even thinking about it. Oh, yeah, I heard you almost had your first cover. And I was like, okay, that's not even funny, dude. Like, don't, like, I just thought he was messing with me. And I'm like, dude, please don't, you can't tug, tug at my heartstrings like that. And he was like, no, no, I, I, I don't think you had the cover. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I was like, put me on with George. So I had to call, you know, I, I transferred over to George and basically sheepishly, he kind of admitted to me what happened was they were laying out the cover and they had three or four different options, all of Joey Harrington and all the covers were laid out. And then the, whoever makes that final decision, picked the one. And they thought all of those pictures were mine. Turns out one of them was not. And that's the one they actually picked to run on the cover. It was photographed by uh, Simon Broody, who's a great guy, fantastic photographer. So, uh, you know, but certainly I was disappointed. I was so bummed about that. And to find out that way, I kind of learned my lesson. Like, don't say anything to anybody until you actually hold the magazine in your hand. So anyway, the next month uh, was November 23rd, 2002. And the magazine sent me to cover Michigan or Ohio State. Now that's a massive game any year, right? But I was there again, because I'm the new guy, I was there with two other photographers, Al Thielmans and Damian Strohmeyer, both legends, just like Simon and so many of the other staff photographers. And I was just, you know, so happy to be part of that team. And um, like I said, it's always a huge game, Michigan, Ohio State. This particular year was even bigger. Ohio State by now still undefeated. They're 12-0, ranked number two in the country. Michigan was nine and two. They were ranked ninth. Um, and basically, Ohio State, if they they're win and in, if they won that game, they go on to the national championship game, which you know is obviously as big as it gets. Now, because I was kind of the young guy, the new kid, um, they put me in the overhead position, which means um, Al and Damien were working on the field, walking up and down the sidelines and shooting those low, beautiful photos that most of us want to shoot. And I was in the press box shooting down, uh, making wide shots, making tight shots. It's kind of a, it's not, I mean, look, I'll be honest, it's not as glamorous a, p a position to be in because those, those low angle pictures are so nice, but it's good for the magazine to sort of have those overheads. It's sort of a cover your butt uh, angle where I'm gonna pretty much have every play of the game. So if there's not a great picture from the ground, I'm gonna have it. And sometimes it just does lead to some nice, interesting photographs. But like I said, I, I wasn't complaining. I was certainly happy to be there. I was up there with, um, I was shooting digital at this game with the Canon EOS 1D, the first, you know, sort of really good Canon digital. Um, and then I was using a 400 millimeter 2.8 lens, which is a massive, you know, one of those massive lenses you see photographers going up and down the sidelines with. Um, and so I was using that lens on a monopod and just covering the whole game. Now, the last play of the game, if you're an Ohio State fan or even a Michigan fan, you probably know uh, Ohio State was winning. Michigan had the ball. One second left, they, they one last ditch pass to the end zone. It was intercepted. Ohio State wins the game 14 and nine. That place, if you've never seen the uh, stadium there, Ohio Stadium in Columbus, it holds a, almost 102,000 people. <laughs> like that's an insane amount of people. I believe it was just under 102,000. Now they've added a little bit, it's over 102,000. So because it came down to the last second, it was such a big game. The fans storm the field, like they jump over the gates and just storm the whole place. I'm trying everything I can to shoot wide shots, tight shots. You know, it happens very quickly, but I'm doing what I can. I've got the 400 up and then I see somebody sort of get lifted up on, on the shoulder, you know, on their shoulders, on some other player's shoulders. And I just, with the 400, I just blasted away best I could to, you know, get it in focus and try to, uh, try to make a picture. I didn't really even see who it was at the time, but, uh, you know, I was just shooting that and shooting other things for the photo people out there. Um, uh, I was, it was daytime, so I was at uh, 400 ISO, shooting at 2.8 at about 800th of a second. So uh, that was really it. I 
and then the three of us, we what we usually do uh, back then is rush out of the stadium as fast as we can. We want to beat the traffic because we have to get to a pro game the next day. So we've got to get to the airport to get on a flight. And, and I don't remember what time this game was, but it was still daylight. So we had to get out of there to get probably the last flight out. Um, I was actually covering the Falcons at Panthers the next day in Charlotte. Um, I think Al was actually actually doing that same game with me. Funny, we were actually there to photograph this a story about this young uh, quarterback in his second year, Michael Vick, who was uh, kind of changing the makeup of uh, of the league as far as quarterbacks go. But uh, we, because we're shooting digital, you can't transmit images at the game. We, we're just trying to get to the airport. So basically, you want to get to the airport, get to the next city, get in the hotel room, and then once you get there, then we can transmit our images. Um, sometimes overnight back then, the phone lines, you know, and the internet was not as fast as it is now. So uh, at the airport, at the gate, I remember very vividly starting to copy from my digital cards into the computer. And then, then I really kind of realized what I had. And I think it was Damien who was sitting there kind of looking over my shoulder as I was dumping my images. They may have been shooting film actually, now that I think about it. We might've been doing both. I don't honestly remember, but I was copying my images into the computer and I remember Damien saying, um, that guy on the shoulders, that's Craig Krenzel. And I was like, oh yeah, that's the quarterback. So that picture, you know, sort of had more meaning at that point. It was already a good picture, but I think um, considering who that was, um, it definitely added uh, to the value of that. So, um, you know, I didn't really, I hadn't been at the magazine that long, so I didn't really know if it would be a big deal for them or not, but certainly was hopeful. So the magazine comes out, I went to the pro game, did all that, and then the magazine comes out on Wednesday. And a lot of times I, you don't know if you're gonna have anything in the magazine. You don't wanna call the photo editors after every game, hey, how'd I do, you know, uh, um, you know, do I have anything? Because they're busy enough as it is, and you don't wanna bug your editors just about that. And you know, it's kind of cooler to like not care. Oh yeah, oh, I got a picture in the magazine, oh great, you know. So turns out that picture of Krenzel uh, in the crowd being lifted up, ran as the opening spread in the story. It was what we call, what the magazine calls a double truck in the, in the magazine industry. They call that a double truck, a two page photo that goes across the gutter. And um, Damien had a couple of pictures in there as well. A couple of pictures of Maurice Claret. Um, he had a tight shot and then the game winning touchdown. And then I also had a second overhead shot in the story of Krenzel um, showing the offensive line, which was again, you can kind of see that better from that overhead shot than you really can from the line. So certainly I was very happy about that um, to get some pictures in there. So Ohio State having won that game, they did go on to the national championship. As you probably know, they played in the Fiesta Bowl against Ken Dorsey and the reigning national champion, Miami Hurricanes. Now that team, first of all, considered one of the greatest college football teams ever. Um, the year before they won the national championship in 2001. Um, and if you don't know this about me, I was born and raised in Miami. I went to the University of Miami. I worked at the Miami Herald. I basically spent the first 30 years of my life uh, living and working in Miami. I covered the Hurricanes both as a college student and at the Miami Herald. And I don't get excited about pro teams that much. I mean, it's nice when the Dolphins win, but I don't I don't get too excited about pro teams because they're going to be back every year and, you know, they'll be fine. College players, I feel bad if they lose because most of them will never play again after they're done with, with college. So the Hurricanes are my team. I'm a big fan. I really want them to win every year. They came into that game, that national championship game, heavily favored. They had 34 straight wins and um, they were expected to win. I think they were 13 point favorites. Um, I did. I was not shooting that game for the magazine. They, you know, the national championship as the new kid, they had more important people than me there at the time. Um, but if you know anything about that season, that game, Ohio State did defeat the Miami Hurricanes. Although I should say Ohio State really didn't defeat them. It really was the referees. There was a horrible call at the end of the game in overtime that cost the Hurricanes the game. Shouldn't have even been that close, but Ohio State played very well and kept it close and the Hurricanes actually lost. It's a very controversial call. It was a horrible, horrible call. But anyway, I won't go there because um, I wasn't even covering that game. It's really the worst way to lose a game, especially a national championship game. And really the Hurricanes haven't really recovered since then. Um, they've shown flashes of greatness over the last couple decades, but they're not quite back there yet. And that that game, I think, was the beginning of kind of setting them on a, on a bad track. But anyway, 
Thing is, that overhead picture from the Michigan Ohio State game has been pretty good for me over years. Over the years, um, the Ohio State coach at the time, Jim Tressel, he wanted a print for his office, which was pretty cool. Sports Illustrated has run it multiple times. They it in there it was in their pictures of the decade issue. It was a double truck in the 50th anniversary issue. Um, other there's been other accolades. Photo District News called it an icon of the 21st century, uh, which seemed a bit premature because we're still pretty early in the 21st century. But nevertheless. I was happy that it was getting a lot of recognition. So that was super cool for me. Um, and just, you know, I'm proud of that image. And then uh, before the beginning of the 2003 season, Sports Illustrated does every year or did at the time, I, I don't know if they still do, an annual college football preview issue. Now with no warning at all, um, I just got my weekly magazine in the mail and guess what? I had the cover, holy cow. My first cover, super excited and guess who it was? None other than Craig Krenzel. <laughs> it was a picture from that Wisconsin game with a nice red background. So, um, you know, it was a little bittersweet, but certainly very, very happy to have my first cover. Um, and Craig Krenzel came through for me again. Now I've had more covers since then. You know, uh, I don't really like to talk about how many covers I have. I think it'd be kind of tacky to talk about. 13, by the way, I have 13 Sports Illustrated covers. Um, I have 10 from the Weekly Magazine, a couple of commemorative issues, and one Sports Illustrated on campus. So that's 13 covers. Um, I'm obviously being a little silly about that, but I am proud of that accomplishment considering I was only really a regular contributor for the magazine for about a decade. Um, some of those SI staffers have hundreds and hundreds of covers. Um, it was a lot of work working uh, for the magazine, but so much fun and, and really an honor to travel the world working for Sports Illustrated. I did work for them pretty solidly uh, until I started touring with Bon Jovi in like 2010, 11, 12. Um, and by now the magazine has been bought and sold a couple times and editorial sports photography, that industry really hasn't, um, it's really changed quite a bit. So it's not financially feasible, which is unfortunate because uh, it would be fun to still do that kind of work, but it's just not, not possible possible for me these days. Um, but my early days working for SI were definitely helped out by, yes, Ohio State quarterback Craig Krenzel. If anyone watching this actually knows him, feel free to forward the link to this video. Craig, I'm still a little pissed off about the 2002 National Championship, but it was really the referees, and so it's kind of tough to blame you personally. Um, reach out if you want. I'll be happy to send you a print or two of those images. Um, anyone else who's watching this, if you're an Ohio State fan or you just like good photography and want a fine art print, of the overhead photo with uh, Krenzel being carried off the field, go, please go to davidbergmanphoto.com. I'm making 11 by 14 fine art prints available, printing them on really nice gallery quality paper, and I'm hand signing them myself. I've also got pictures on that site from other episodes in this series, so you can check all that out at davidbergmanphoto.com. I'm doing my best to pull out a new interesting story every week, so please subscribe, like, and comment uh, so that that YouTube algorithm uh, knows that you're watching. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. Hopefully I'll be back next time with another interesting story right here from the vault.